put him through a palm tree. So hopefully I shall look fairly okay through morning prayer this morning. Good, good, excellent. Well, we're going to, um, we're going to be, uh, what are we going to be doing? It's, it's, it isn't a particular commemoration today, is it? So it's Psalm 37, which is fairly long, but that's okay, we'll manage. And then Acts 17, 16 to the end. And we're going to be praying for our friends and neighbours in St. Lawrence Alve Church. <clears throat> oh, wonderful. Well, greetings to everybody, whether you're joining us live or whether you're watching on recording later on. It's good that you're with us. Oh, Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. And we'll say in alternate verses, God, be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So to Psalm 37, which again we'll offer in alternate verses. Fret not because of evildoers, be not jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like grass, and like the green herb fade away. Trust in the Lord and be doing good. Dwell in the land and be nourished with truth. Let your delight be in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. Do not fret over those that prosper as they follow their evil schemes. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret lest you be moved to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. Yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. You will search for their place and find them gone. But the lowly shall possess the land and shall delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous, and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow, to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who walk in truth. Their sword shall go through their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. The little that the wicked have is better than the great, the richer, sorry, the wicked, the little that the righteous have is better than the great rich, riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the godly, and their inheritance shall stand forever. They shall not be put to shame in the perilous time. And in days of famine they shall have enough. But the wicked shall perish. Like the glory of the meadows, the enemies of the Lord shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous are generous in giving. For those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, but those who are cursed by him shall be rooted out. When your steps are guided by the Lord and you delight in his way, 
Though you stumble, you shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds you fast by the hand. I have been young and now am old, yet never have I seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging their bread. All the day long they are generous in lending, and their children also shall be blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves the thing that is right, and will not forsake his faithful ones. The unjust shall be destroyed forever, and the offspring of the wicked shall be rooted out. The righteous shall possess the land, and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks the thing that is right. The law of the Lord is in their heart, and their footsteps shall not slide. The wicked spy on the righteous, and seek occasion to slay them. The Lord will not lead them, lead, leave them in their hand, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land, and when the wicked are uprooted, you shall see it. I myself have seen the wicked in great power and flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by and lo, they were gone. I sought them, but they could nowhere be found. Keep innocence and heed the thing that is right, for that will bring you peace at the last. But the sinners shall perish together and the posterity of the wicked shall be rooted out. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord shall stand by them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and shall save them because they have put their trust in him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So we go forward to our reading for this morning, which is Acts chapter 17, beginning at verse 16. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Also, some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus and asked him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? It sounds rather strange to us, so we would like to know what it means. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands. For though he need, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. 
From one ancestor he made all, the, all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the time of times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, we will hear you again about this. At that point, Paul left them. But some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris and others with them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. The Benedictus. You promised, O oh God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You promised, O oh God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. So to our prayers of intercession, as we pray for the church and the world and the day before us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, for the ways in which you continue to speak to believers today for the continuing accounts of the early church. We continue to pray for our own witness and ministry today in ever and fast changing times. <clears throat> We're asked today to pray in particular for our friends and neighbours at St Lawrence Alve Church, for their growing as disciples, 
as they seek to come through the pandemic with wisdom and patience. For all involved in their mission and ministry, particularly their online services. We do lift to you, Lord, their vicar, Richard Bubbers, their readers, Sue Phillips, Wardle and Helen Ailing. At the same time, we pray for the Diocese of Panyama in South Sudan with Bishop Semi Nigo Abinda of Central Solomons in Melanesia, with Bishop Ben Sika, and of Central Tanganyika in Tanzania with Bishop Dixon Chilongani. You know these places and peoples far better than we do. We simply lift them to you, Lord, and ask that you will bless them today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who lead us, for our archbishops, our own bishops, John and Martin, and for our deanery, particularly for the ongoing open conversations throughout the diocese, that you would continue to enable people to engage with those conversations, and that your will will be apparent to us as we go forward. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pray for those in local government and community leaders, those of positions of influence and authority in our local society, asking simply that you would lead them with your kingdom values and we pray too more widely for the leaders of nations including our own government and prime minister but likewise your holy spirit will lead them lord in your mercy hear our prayer we continue to pray for those who work with the young and the elderly for those who work in nursing homes or provide care for those residentially. We pray too for our schools and colleges and universities, especially within our own parish, all those involved in education, once again facing extraordinary and changing challenges. We ask for your protection and guidance upon them all. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we pray once again for emergency and rescue organisations, thanking you for their sacrificial and selfless work. Thank you for the ministry offered to them by many people, not least Dick Johnson through his chaplaincy to the fire and police services, and many others. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we bring before you those known to us who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Particularly those most affected by the increased restrictions. Perhaps those known to us personally who are suffering. Ask that you would grant them strength. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who grieve at this time. Remembering those members of our own communities who have died. Also lifting before you those families to whom we are ministering at this time. And asking that you would draw alongside them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, as we anticipate a new day before us, so we submit ourselves once again into your hands for all the meetings, discussions, decisions and encounters that lie before us today. We ask that your Holy Spirit will lead us, that we may follow you faithfully and obediently. Lord, in your mercy. 
hear our prayer. We continue to pray for Francis as he prepares for his ordination as priest on Sunday. And we thank you for all the preparations that continue to go into that service. We ask that he would find the time and space to spend time with you, to experience your presence in a new way this week. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, but always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Richard, and um, I hope you have a good day as everybody else with us. Yep, looking forward to it. Good. Go well. <laughs>